I'm Hari Subhash with Kinetica. In this video, we will cover the basic concepts behind graphs with a specific emphasis on those that are most relevant for Kinetica. Graphs are an intuitive way to represent information about the world as a set of entities and relationships. Entities can be anything ranging from people, objects, places, websites, etc. While relationships depict things like who is friends with whom, who owns what, are two places connected by a road, what are the links going from one website to another, etc. Entities are commonly referred to as nodes in graph lingo, while edges represent relationships. As you can imagine from these examples, graphs can be used to depict a wide variety of data. Additionally, the graph data model also introduces new ways of analyzing this data when compared to the traditional relational data model or the NoSQL data model. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of graphs. Edges can either be undirected or directed. An example of an undirected graph would be say data that represents a friend network on Facebook. The nature of the friend relationship is such that you can only be friends with someone if they are also friends with you. So the direction of the edge depicting this connection is irrelevant since an edge can only exist if both the nodes are friends with each other. We can contrast this with an example from Twitter. On Twitter, you can follow someone without them having to follow you. So you could have a graph as follows where edges are characterized by a direction that determines who follows whom. For instance, in this case, A follows B, but B does not follow A. This is an example of a directed graph. Edges can also have additional characteristics that can be represented using weights. Consider a road network between four cities, A, B, C, and D. D is closer to both A and C. Now let's say we want to find an optimal path from A to C. Based on just the information on distance, it would seem that the best way to get to C from A would be through D, since it is closer to both of them. But what if we had some additional information which is as follows. The road from A to D is in really poor condition while the traffic from D to C is really bad. The roads from A to B and B to C on the other hand are wide, well maintained and have minimal traffic. This new information could alter our estimate for the best route between A and C. Weights are a way to model this into a graph network so that additional information about edges can be factored into our calculations. Graphs that have weights associated with them are called weighted graphs. Next, let's look at restrictions using the same example. Let's say that the city B is no longer accepting incoming traffic while the road from B to C has been closed off. This would mean that our earlier solution for getting from A to C via B is no longer possible. Instead, we will now have to go via the city D to get to C. Restrictions allow us to model this new information into a graph by blocking certain nodes or edges while solving it. Now that we have a sense for graphs and their features, let's look at some of their common applications. Let's start with pathfinding problems which are concerned with the best way to move from one node to another in a graph. These are commonly applied to route navigation software. Another class of problems are those that are concerned with matching supply of goods with the demand for them. These can inform decisions of where to place a depot or a warehouse, how much capacity to provide, what routes to use, etc. Centrality problems establish the relative importance of different nodes in a particular network. This can, for instance, be used to do things such as find the most important person in a social network or identify key infrastructure nodes, say, in an urban transport network. This is just a small subset of the types of problems that can be addressed using graphs. We will cover a lot more of these in later videos. This brings us to the end of this video. To summarize, graphs represent data as a set of entities and relationships. We can use graphs to model really complicated information using features such as directions and weights on edges and restrictions on both nodes and edges. Finally, graphs have a wide range of applications, a small subset of which include finding the best path between two different points, matching supply and demand, and uh, finding the most important node within a particular network.